Uh, well, let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for your loving care for us. We thank you that even when we're sick or not feeling well, that your word comes to us and refreshes us and helps us. And we thank you for that. And we thank you for the ability to uh, live in the spirit and be close to you and experience the great greatness of this season, the Advent hope and joy and peace and uh, love that you have for us and be reflective about these things and what it means to celebrate your first coming and your second coming. Thank you for each one uh, viewing this and give them everything they need and your special help for those that are sick uh, this morning and have been battling things uh, through this past week. And we pray for healing and strength. And again, we're glad that uh, we can count on you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, we are fast approaching the end of our series, How to Live Like Kings. And so uh, to uh, kind of give you a feel, and we'll do this over the next couple of lessons, for what we've accomplished during this past year and all, we'll, we'll turn over to the timeline that I updated uh -huh. yesterday, and we get kind of a sense of how right here, <laughs> how uh, how far we have gone. Oh, it's right in all that uh, glare there. I wonder if I dare try, try to on. get around the glare. They can read it. It'll be a win. Tell me about that. Can you read it? It's small. That's it's the small. Do. All right. Well, let's not spend too much time with this. <laughs> it leans way in, and I'm not sure that was going to help so much. <laughs> so over here we have Solomon, and then the divided kingdom. This is about uh, 930 ish right here, and we made through the unit. Uh, divided kingdoms north and south and then northern kingdom of israel went into exile Ahaz, about this time of ahaz and especially hezekiah in here so we went on through hezekiah manasseh was a very difficult reign a long reign of 52 years but you know he reformed at the end and then there was the short reign of Ammon, two years, and then Josiah. And we're just leaving a little space by the end because that's all that's left. Unfortunately, everything's going to be terminated at that point in terms of the monarchy in uh, Judah and Jerusalem area and... <laughs> How do we do this? Oh, I'm blocking. That's right. <laughs> All right. And, uh, but the reign of the Lord does not end. And while the, the, this physical uh, kingdom kind of disappears for a while, uh, we know those of us that study uh, and read through the Gospels that the line continues all the way down through uh, different ones to Mary and to Joseph. And their uh, uh, earthly lineage is right in that same line. The, the, those are their ancestors up there on the wall, uh, especially the, uh, the, the ones in uh, the bottom there, Judah area. Uh, so we come to Josiah. We had one lesson uh, yesterday. yesterday yester week uh last <laughs> week uh, and uh we saw how josiah at a very early early age took the throne you remember how old he was eight eight eight, eight. you're all right yeah time delay eight, 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 eight. <laughs> <laughs> and uh he started reforms when he was 12 i think okay all right and as a teenager and now we come to verse 8 in our chapter, 2 Chronicles, uh, 
let's see. Second Chronicles 34, verse 8. And he takes an even more active role. And we're to see this, that as he grows up, his action becomes even greater uh, in following the Lord. And that's a good pattern. Really good pattern. So we're going to take up the action. Second Chronicles 34, 34, uh, verse 8. And if we, well, I can see that we're not going to have time, but we might be able to consult uh, Second Kings. But it's essentially the same thing. But there are a few details about the later part of the action that we want to pick up uh, if we don't get to that. But that passage is Second Kings 23. All right, so 2 Chronicles 34, verse 8. Janelle, tell us how to do this. <laughs> Diane, Dave, Rochelle, Karen, and then me, and then you. All right, thank it, you. On our screen, it goes in a circle. Maybe it does for you, too. I don't know. I think it. I think the person who is, like, their computer is always top right. That is my theory. <laughs> okay, verse 8. Yes. Yep. In the 18th year of Josiah's reign to purify the land of the temple, he sent Shaphan, son of Azaliah, and Messiah, the ruler of the city, with Joan, son of jo Joahaz, the recorder, to repair the temple of the Lord his God. They went to Hilkiah, the high priest, and gave him the money that had been brought into the temple of God which the Levites, who were the doorkeepers, had collected from the people of Manasseh, Ephraim, and the entire remnant of Israel, and from all the people of Judah and Benjamin and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Then they entrusted it to the men appointed to supervise the work of the Lord's temple. These men paid the workers who repaired and restored the temple. They also gave money to the carpenters and builders to purchase dressed stone and timber for joists and beams for the buildings that the kings of Judah had allowed to fall into ruin. The workers labored faithfully. Over them to direct them were Jahath and Obadiah, Levites descended from Merari, and Zechariah and Meshulam descended from Kohath. The Levites, all who were skilled in playing musical instruments, had charge of the laborers and supervised all the workers from job to job. Some of the Levites were secretaries, scribes, and doorkeepers. And I'm going to stop there for a little bit. So uh, how old is Josiah at this point? 18th year? 26? Yeah, right. Yeah. Very good. Okay, we get a sense of this. And what's his plan? Purify the land and the temple. Okay, uh, yes, uh, verse 8, and the procedure is uh, given then in repairing the temple. Okay, and that's how this all starts out, really as a, a construction project, because the temple needs repair and like that. Something else takes place as they get into the work, and so we're going to... Uh, but. It, uh, but we'll get to that in just a moment. But we do want to see that some of the reforms that were put in place from Joash a long time ago on our timeline there, you back up all the way, uh, well, wow. yeah, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or about ten kings ago, uh, there were reforms under Joash after Athaliah had taken the throne. And so there's this, those were those plans he goes back to with the doorkeepers collecting things and for the money and then repairs and that. So there's this kind of continuity, like, okay, remember Joash, he was really little and then he grew up and did this. And Josiah is the same way. He's little, takes the throne and grows up and, you know, Sometimes we can go back to patterns of faithful people in the past and really pattern our life lives after them. 
hint, hint for following the disciples and following Jesus and following. Uh, there's some, I mean, we apply it to our own time, but this is what we do. Uh, we take our example from those who are faithful in the past, too. And that's what they were doing. Uh, so we have this procedure, and he reinstates it or keeps it going, but it leads to a greater mission than just a construction project of the temple. So let's see what happens in verses 14 and following. I think we're back. Pardon to is it? Yeah. My turn? Yes, 14. Okay. While they were bringing out the money that had been taken into the temple of the Lord, Hilkiah the priest found the book of the law of the Lord that had been given through Moses. Hilkiah said to Shaphan the secretary, I have found the book of the law in the temple of the Lord. He gave it to Shaphan. Then Shaphan took the book to the king and reported to him, Your officials are doing everything that has been committed to them. They have paid out the money that was in the temple of the Lord and have entrusted it to the supervisors and workers. Then Shaphan, the secretary, informed the king, Hilkiah the priest has given me a book, and Shaphan read from it in the presence of the king. When the king heard the words of the law, he tore his robes. He gave these orders to Hilkiah, Ahikam son of Shaphan, Abdon son of Micah, Shaphan the secretary, and Isaiah the king's attendants. Go and inquire of the Lord for me and for the remnant in Israel and Judah about what is written in this book that has been found. Great is the Lord's anger that is poured out on us because our fathers have not kept the word of the Lord. They have not acted in accordance with all that is written in the book. Hukiah and those the king had sent with him went to speak to the prophet Huldah who was the wife of Shalom, son of Tokath, the son of Hazra, keeper of the wardrobe. She lived in Jerusalem in the new quarter. She said to them, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel said. Tell the man who sent you to me. This is what the Lord says. I am going to bring disaster on this place and its people. All the curses written in the book that has been read in the presence of the king of Judah. Because they have forsaken me and burned incense to other gods and provoked me to anger by all that their hands have made, my anger will be poured out on this place and will not be quenched. Tell the king of Judah who sent you to inquire of the Lord. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says concerning the words you heard. Because your heart was responsive and you humbled yourselves before God when you heard what he spoke against this place and its people. And because you humbled yourself before me and tore your robes and wept in my presence, I have heard you, declares the Lord. Now I will gather you to your ancestors and you will be buried in peace. Your eyes will not see all the disaster I am going to bring on this place and on those who live here. So they took her answer back to the king. Then the king called together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. He went up to the temple of the Lord with the people of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the priests and the Levites, all the people from the least to the greatest. He read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant, which had been found in the temple of the Lord. The king stood by his pillar and renewed the covenant in the presence of the Lord to follow the Lord and keep his commands, regulations, and decrees with all his heart and all his soul and to obey the words of the covenant written in this book. Then he had everyone in Jerusalem and Benjamin pledge themselves to it. The people of Jerusalem did this in accordance with the covenant of God, the God of their fathers. Josiah removed all the detestable idols from all the territory belonging to the Israelites, and he had all who were present in Israel serve the Lord their God. As long as they lived, they did not fail to follow the Lord, the God of their fathers. 
Okay, we're going to pause there and go back and pick up some details. Yeah, it's always amazing to me how we kind of zoom in very close and we get into the actual inner chamber of the king and this conversation is recorded. Uh, sometimes, you know, we know long times of period are skipped over, but then we have these focal points and uh, Zoom periods. <laughs> <laughs> <Don't do that. laughs> it's a critical time for them what will the king do when they find this book of the law which most of the scholars think is the book of deuteronomy which also has blessings as well as curses in it for following the covenant made on sinai and renewed by the people so the book of the law, most people think it's Deuteronomy, like the scroll that was found. And it sets in motion this opportunity to have a greater repair than just this outward kind of bricks and mortar and, and gold and all that kind of thing for repairing a construction. But now there's an opportunity to go further into the heart because of the word of God. And this is, uh, you remember we talked last time about Josiah, how he did the best he could with uh, following the Lord up to that point and introducing reforms and all like that and was zealous and, and carrying it forward. Now he has a chance, not just to go by that zeal or that enthusiasm or by the example of even some of his forefathers like Hezekiah and others. Now he has a chance to hear from God directly. And remember, written in Deuteronomy is a copy. I mean, that section that says the king is to read this daily. <laughs> to read the word daily and make a copy for himself and meditate upon it and think there's a whole provision there. And so I... Just put yourself in like Shapan or the others, Hilkiah. They find this book of the law. They know now that it, they haven't been following it. Well, what should we do with it? You know, there are these options. Well, what would the king do? I mean, he, it, honestly, the possibilities of the outcome for what they did with the law are, it's a really critical time. They could have ignored it. Oh, everything's going fine. Every, you know, he the king is just taking his clue from us. So let's just keep doing what we've been doing. Or they could have hid it. Said, well, you know, this is a, a precious artifact from way back when. Let's put it in a museum so it doesn't get lost again. Yeah, that wasn't what they did let's let's guard let let's guard it let's put a guard around it and let's not tell anybody you know we'll keep it and for a, a time when we really need it or let's just throw it away <laughs> i mean honestly we're tossing the old trash yeah they had that or let's share it and not just share it with anybody well, let's take it to the king. Now, that's a pretty bold move when you know the king hasn't been doing everything God told him to do. It wasn't his fault because he didn't have it, but now they have it. And we want to do the best with the revelation that is given to us, the word of God, and not ignore it, not set it aside, not say, oh, I got this, God, but bring out the whole word of God and bring it out for others because they don't know what God says. Okay, so the decision, they make the right decision, these priests, and they bring it to Josiah. Now, what could Josiah have done with it? All the same, All the same things. <laughs> yeah. And um, But what happens? Verse 9. The 19, I'm sorry. He tore his robes and 
What is tearing the robe symbolic for? Grief and mourning. Exactly. Mourning, uh, hearing it from a couple different people. That's right. This is repentance, grief, mourning, tearing the robes. Oh, no. And then later we find out uh, because the prophetess also, at, you know, says how kind of frames it for him what you did there, uh, Josiah. OK, so very good. Um, there's repentance. There's humility. He's humbling himself. And then the next move is to consult. God. Yeah, God's prophet, prophet Tess, it's a female prophet, Hulda, the wife of Shalom, and so forth like that. I'll identify that way. Very interesting and very informative, too, for us that the king calls upon a woman for instruction. That's Lincoln. Yeah. 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 Now, there are some denominations that say, bad mistake. No, no, it's in the word of God. And she gives the word of God and she instructs a man, a king. And if we use the rules for how to look at a prophet, what she says comes true and is accurate. So that's a reason that, especially now, we have no place to say that was a bad call. Absolutely. That's right. That's right. And so I'm so pleased about our Advent Christian denomination that we do ordain women to be missionaries and preachers and teachers. And in our own conference, we have an ordained minister here in the Pocahontas Conference. So um, uh, she's currently retired, <laughs> but uh, she is a, a minister. Uh, yes. And the past, you know, it's not just a New Testament passage, Acts chapter 2, which says, I'll pour out my spirit upon young and old, male and female. But we see also God's spirit given to females in the Old Testament to prophetess. Mm -hmm. And she is exactly in line with God's word, Deuteronomy, and, and which she uh, affirms here too, and which affirms her word. And so, uh, verse 27, we, she tells about Josiah's heart. Your heart was responsive. You humbled yourself before God when you heard what he spoke against this place and uh, humbled yourself, tore your robes, wept in my presence. So we get additional detail. And I think we're to understand that uh, she wasn't told about that, but God told her about that. And that's a bit speculative, but I think that's confirmation, not only of her word, but of Josiah and God's working with all of them. And I uh, just want to continue with this just a little bit, that she brings both a word of judgment and a word of salvation, just as the book of Deuteronomy brings blessings, but also curses. Mm -hmm. There is a blessing for following God's word, but a curse. And so when we look at what she actually says, look at the judgment in verse 24. Where's the judgment going to take place? Location. All right. Israel, specifically. Judah. This place. Jerusalem. Jerusalem. This place. It's Jerusalem. So, again, this is confirming the word of the other prophets that said, okay, Manasseh and the others did so much evil that the end is coming. The end is coming. But, not yet. The specific indictment is also in uh, uh, verse 25, I guess. What are, what are the problems? They burned incense to other gods. Yes. Okay. Idol worship, other gods. Forsaken me. Forsaken in the heart. You've abandoned God. I mean, they lost the God's word after all. <laughs> That's abandoning. Yeah. What else? 
and provoke God to anger yes. with what they made. Yes. And obviously Josiah was starting to repair because the temple was in disrepair and all it was falling down and all like that needed it hadn't been kept up and it actually had been polluted when with other things as we see from some other passages too but even though the judgment's going to take place on jerusalem and on judah and the kingdom what about josiah look down to he's not going to live to see it right right and so we remember that was the same thing that was given to Hezekiah, right? Yeah, it's not, and he says, not even in my lifetime, so I'm not going to worry about it. It's all going to be carried away to Babylon. But the prophet is going to be true. Manasseh, he experiences salvation and repents. Uh, but the rest of the people are carried away. Josiah, he is given salvation assurance also, but the direction of the whole country is uh, not going to survive. So it always makes me wonder, and it's it's a what if, so there's no answer. If if um, the next king had followed the Lord with all of his heart, he <clears throat> would have also pressed that judgment back further and and so you know it I, I tell my students I can't answer the what ifs but it does make me think about the consequences of my actions in relation to what the bible says yes yes uh I think this is a very good thing to think about <laughs> we don't know because there were no good kings after this I'll just give you the short on it <laughs> So God does bring about his word uh, and the delay uh, doesn't, it, is short-lived. But these things apply directly into our own time because of what's said in Second Peter. The Lord is, is slow, is not slow in keeping his promise, but patient so that people will repent. The same thing's happening in our day. Judgment, destruction of the earth, uh, and it's carried, you know, destruction of all evil is being delayed because there's still people out there that need to hear our message and will repent and will accept Christ. And you're part of them. You're part of that faithful remnant. How many more are out there? And how long will God delay? And we really do need to stop our lesson for today. But this is how we make those applications. We have a chance to, like Josiah right now, take up God's word wholeheartedly and work vigorously all over the kingdom because this is what takes place and he's not content just oh well i'm gonna be okay so everybody else can just go and be destroyed <laughs> we'll say it that way uh, no he's gonna take it out to other people and out and renew the covenant go into leadership training call people back and as long as he's living they're following the right thing. And it's a tremendous testament to his influence and also the power of your example and where you have influence. So I really want to encourage you in this. You don't have to do it alone. You've got God's word. He already had God's spirit. These things combine for a powerful revival as long as he's alive. But it really doesn't take hold of the hearts because he is their spiritual leader. They're depending upon him. When he exits the scene, you likewise have a powerful influence right now. You use that, exert that, follow God's word, follow his instruction, follow his spirit. And I've really got to pray before <laughs> I get cut off. <laughs> Let's pray. Dear Lord in heaven, thank you for giving us your word. Help us to treasure it. Help us to guard it. Help us to put it on our hearts and by your spirit, bring it out for the people to hear. 
help people to latch on to that word and where we have influence we're a force for righteousness we're a force for the lord we're a force for bringing jesus into the places where we have influence in our homes businesses opportunities in the workplace and recreation places and shopping places lord give us uh uh confidence to proclaim your word that even though you're coming in judgment you're also bringing salvation and glory thank you for your first coming your second coming the opportunity to now uh, that many more will believe and be saved before it's too late and bless us bless your people with courage and with your uh, encouragement for others to get right with you in jesus name amen Amen. Amen. Yes, may revival break out where in our land and in our county and in our area where we have influence. May revival start in your hearts too, just as it did with Josiah. And uh, may God's word dwell in you richly. And uh, blessings until next week.